You understand what I'm trying to say? Since you know the ways of sin is that you have left sin. You were once in sin. That Paul said, he said, we were once darkness, but now are we light in the Lord. We were once darkness. We were once doing the things of darkness. We were once following the trend, the steps of the devil. But now we are now children of light. We are now children of victory. Jesus Christ has granted us the victory that we need. But in order for you as a child of God to maintain this victorious life, in order for victory to be yours permanently as a child of God, there are seven things we want to consider today. I know I'm not going to finish it. There are seven things that we want to consider this day. Seven things from that word victory. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. We want to consider those seven letters. If you and I can stick to, if you and I can keep, if you and I can follow these seven steps, or because the, it's not that you, when you follow the first one and you don't follow the other ones, you'll be victorious. You must follow what? Because the word is what? Victory. It's not V. It's not Vic. It's not Vic. It's not Victo. It's Victory. So, for you to be victorious, you must what? Live all the letters. You must live victoriously. Praise God. The first, the first one we want to consider today will be vigilant. And the second one will be instruction. And the third one will be commandment. And the fourth one will be thanksgiving. And the fifth one will be obedience, and the sixth one will be resist, and the seventh will be yield. So we want to consider these seven steps that you and I need to take to maintain a victorious life, to maintain, to be in the realm of victory every day, Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every, every month, every year, you will remain what? Victorious. You see today, why so many of us, we are falling and rising. Today you will be hot for the Lord. You will be doing the things of God. You will be happy. You will say, oh, praise God, brother. Praise God with me, sister. The Lord is good. Now you are praising God, you, you are always, you, you are so excited doing the work of God. You are there at all times when, when there are church activities, you are there, very active. But unfortunately, as you are doing all these things, you thought the devil has gone on vacation. The devil has not gone what? On vacation. And then suddenly because you are not vigilant, because you are not vigilant, in other words, you are not watchful, you are not careful. You are not looking around. You are not sensitive to your environment. Before you knew it, the devil came in and gave you a very... You see, listen to me. Don't think that the devil is such... I don't know the way I'll put it. You think the devil will just come to you and tell you that, I mean, as a child of God, that is burning for the Lord, bubbling for the Lord, you think the devil will just come to you and say, take that knife, we are kill this person. He won't say that. He know you won't do it. You understand? So it comes in a subtle way. It comes in a different way. It may be the word of mouth. Do you know you can say something to somebody and the person leaves your present? The person who do what? Commit suicide. Who killed the person? It's you because your word, the word that came out of your mouth, made that person to do what? To commit suicide. So you kill the person. Now you didn't use knife to stab the person, but you use the word of what? Your mouth. So we may be so excited and then suddenly, because we are not vigilant, the devil comes in and attacks, I mean, attack us, and before we knew it, we were already falling. And then when you fall again, when you realize you are falling, oh God, what have I done? Maybe you commit the sin of fornication, maybe you commit the sin of adultery, or something like that. Or maybe you 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 steal with your pen. Whatever thing you are doing, maybe you told a lie. And then you realize, oh God. What have I done? What have I done this? What have I done this? What have I done this? Oh Lord, please help me. Help me. You rise up again. And God forgive you. 
And after a week, a month, two months, you are bubbling for the Lord again. You are bubbling for the Lord again. You are bubbling again. Oh, praise God. But yet, you are not vigilant. You are not watchful. You are not sensitive to the environment. The devil came again, you fall. People, some people, they fall and rise. They fall and rise. If that type of Christian you are, I am sorry for you because one day the devil will know. He will make his calculation very well. The day you just fall like this, bam, Jesus Christ will just come and you will not be raptured. But that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, falling and rising and falling and rising and falling and rising, such type of Christianity is not a victorious Christian life. Such type of Christian is not victorious. Because the devil defeats you, you stand up again, defeats you, you stand up again, you defeat you. That is not victory. When you say somebody, when you say victory is yours, that means every time of your life, you want victorious. So number one, for you to maintain victory in your life, you must be vigilant. You must be very, very vigilant. The Bible says, let's turn the Bible to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. It's a popular verse. 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 8 and 9. Look at what the Bible says. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. It says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that there's Knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Be vigilant. In order to be watchful. You know, we want to be sensitive to your environment. For you to maintain a victorious Christian life. For victory to be yours permanently, unshakably. You need to be what vigilant. Because the devil, like a roaring lion, seeking wound to devour. You see, we are praying a prayer just right now. We pray the prayer today. The Lord, fresh fire, lives upon me. Lord, do this. Or lives upon me. Let fulfill destiny. You are doing all this or you are saying all this, you are praying all this prayer. And you think that will just fold his hand and allow that fresh fire to fall on you? You think that will just fold his hand and allow that destiny to be fulfilled? He will fight her. But because you are vigilant. And so when he's coming one way, you already know. Hey, this is the devil coming. Oh, he's the one coming. And then listen to me. He doesn't come. It doesn't come in its own form. I want you to understand that. It doesn't come in its own form. Just appear, I am the devil. I have come to meet you now. No. It doesn't come in its own form. It walks through your mind. And then sometimes he uses a what? Human beings. Some human beings, people that are close to you, he may use your husband, he may use your wife, he may use your children, he may use your brother, he may use your sister just to trigger something in you so that you will do things contrary to the will of God. But if you are vigilant, if you are very watchful, if you are very sensitive to your environment, you will know, oh, hey, hold on, hold on. This is what? This is the trick of the devil. Devil, I know I've got you here, I caught you here. You can't overcome me in this one. You must be vigilant. And um, Peter said, he said, he says, you resist him steadfastly in the faith. And the Bible says in uh, the book of First John, let us see uh, First John chapter 5, verse 4. It said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. In other words, whatsoever, whoever is born of God, whoever is born again, whoever has surrendered his or life to Jesus Christ, is what is an overcomer, is a victorious Christian, is a victor. It leaves a victory to say, the Bible went from to say, and this is the victory. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That I said, when you believe in Jesus, you place your faith upon Jesus, you are victorious. But it doesn't just end there. Yes, I put my faith in Jesus, I am victorious, and then you'll be living your life earlier. No, you must be what? Vigilant. You must be very, very watchful. And not only that, point number two. For you to maintain a victorious Christian life or for victory to be yours, you must yield or you must follow every inch of... Let me put it this way. Let me not go that way. 
for you to maintain a victorious Christian life, for victory to be yours, you must accept God's instruction.